Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, thank you very much for, for having me. Um, and it is a true pleasure to be able to see one of the earliest portraits of Drake in the home that Drake lived in and in a chamber the like of which almost certainly was the chamber where this portrait now hangs. It gives you a real thrill of excitement. Um, it gives me a thrill, having not been to Buckman Valley before, to see many of these objects here related to Drake, including, as you'll see, sort of the Morian helmet, which relates to the portrait when you do finally see it in there. But most of all, it gives me a pleasure to see and to feel and experience all the excitement today, the passion, the knowledge that all of the, the volunteers, the staff, the National Truth Trust enthusiasts have shown for this portrait, and I hope you will, will share that when you see it. Um, I thought that I would just give you, if I had time, yeah. just a quick sketch of how it came to be here today. And the story started about two years ago. And a friend of mine in California phoned me up and he said that he bought a portrait. And, and this friend would happily admit he doesn't know a great deal about pictures. Um, he just has a good feeling for things. And he asked whether I thought it was interesting. And many of these stories start with instinct, actually. I mean, I have the great privilege in my life and job to be a sort of professional investigator of instinct. And sometimes one's right, and sometimes one's wrong. Um, but it started with instinct. And I looked at the portrait, and I immediately knew it was from the Elizabethan era. Um, I thought it was Drake, and certainly the portrait showed the same tightly curled hair, the hazel eyes. Um, the physiognomic features that you would see in many other portraits of Drake. Um, and that took me on a certain path. The next path was um, scientific analysis. And so we did x-rays, we did infrared, we did pigment analysis. Um, many of the same techniques and investigations that you probably will be familiar with is the Rembrandt that's also here downstairs. And that's now part of much of what goes on in investigating um, portraits. Um, but then finally, the thing which clinched the identity as Drake was whether you call them warts, skin tags, <laughs> something else. Um, I don't. I never thought that I would really ever talk to an audience about warts or skin tags. Um, but given that I'm also writing a book on Oliver Cromwell, <laughs> I seem to be slightly fixated on, on this aspect. Um, now, if you look at the known portraits of Sir Francis Drake, and when I say known, what I mean is those which were known to have been done during his lifetime were endorsed by engravings and, and other uh, empirical uh, records. Drake had two warts or skin tags, one on the left-hand side of his nose and one on the bridge of his nose. Um, and the portrait that you will see has this enormous glaring <laughs> um, on the middle of the bridge of his nose. Um, and if you begin, therefore, as I did, to look at all the other Elizabethan heroes who this individual could be, there was no doubt that at this point it was Drake. Um, now, what happens at that point is any discovery is a collaborative affair. So um, one talks, I talk to the Tate, the National Portrait Gallery, the V&A, the National Trust, um, and I'll certainly never forget one of my academic colleagues' remarks about the furry swimming trunks that Drake <laughs> happens to be wearing. You can make your own mind up when you go in there about his sartorial elegance um, or not. Um, and it was that process of, of putting the portrait out there, writing articles, getting people's opinions, and very happily, um, everyone has agreed that it seems to be um, Drake. Now, at that point, the question is, which era of Drake's life is it? Because you'll see the portrait, surely, doesn't have the globe. So, fascinatingly, this is, I think, and I think everyone else agrees, this is a portrait pre-circumnavigation of the globe. So, very late, 1570s, that's endorsed by the, the paint analysis and the scientific um, texts, making it one of the earliest oil portraits that um, have ever been recorded of Drake. This was the perfect location to return it to. I'm truly thrilled that he can be here for a year, hopefully longer. Um, and I have never also had the opportunity of cutting a ribbon, <laughs> <laughs> which makes me feel thrilled as well. Um, so do I get to do that now? Happy to see you. And I think 